In this matchup, maybe not as much. I would agree. I think that um, the play for David wouldn't be too bad because it increases the likelihood of a precinct captain draw. But outside of that little sub game, uh, I don't think any any other sub games really are you know factored into player draw. I suppose it's always nice to be on the draw against the Thoughtseize deck, but even that is pretty um, pretty negligible advantage. Yeah, so you mean just in a deck that's trading one for one, having an extra card is really strong? Exactly. Looks like Jesse's going back to the well here. David thinking about his. Looks like he's going to keep, so going to be up two cards. Yeah. So an interesting note in Jesse's list is that he has one Aetherling in his deck. And outside of that, he does not have a win con in the main. He has one Aetherling, he has two Mutavolts. And four Jace. And four Jace, that's it. Th that's how he kills his opponent. Yeah, Doburn's deck does play two Thoughts, what is it? Some number of Thoughtseize in the main. So there's a chance that Doburn can catch Jesse, off. I think he has a full set of thoughts. He's in the main. He, if he wow, can catch four, that yeah. Aetherling, it's going to be very hard for. It, it could be that he takes you know all of Jesse's win cons. Yeah, yeah, it is definitely possible. This is one of the dangers of not having a backup win con. Interestingly enough, Jesse does not have any Elspeths anywhere in the seventy-five here. Yeah, I asked him about it yesterday, and he scoffed at me saying that Elspeth is, you know, trash. It's just not good. Actually, certainly one who is not timid with his opinions on cards. <laughs> yeah. It's like, alright, fair enough, man. <laughs> alright, so Jesse just starts developing lands. David does have a turn one Soldier of the Pantheon, which can get aggressive here. Also can't be Azorius Charmed, thanks to its protection from multicolored. Convenient. Yeah, Jesse does have the charm, but it'll just be cycled, and Jesse will drop to 18 from that first attack. And David does conveniently go up to 21. Not that his life total is going to matter too much this matchup, but yep. a Mutavolt. A Mutavolt and passes the turn. Jesse does have a Dissolve in hand. He doesn't have the second blue for it yet. He has dis also has Celestial Flare here. He's going to go ahead and not flare the Soldier of the Pantheon. All right. That indicates a, a Syncopate to me. We'll see. Another Soldier joins the fray. An Unsyncopatable Soldier. And it does resolve. Yeah, that protection from multicolored is being very relevant here. You see a detention sphere in Jesse's hand, which typically would be great against a double one drop. Start, once again, can't really be used thanks to that protection from multicolored. Yep, and Jesse forced to essence scatter the soldier, buy some time and draw out of his mana woes, but it does not work, and he misses his fourth land drop and is still missing a second blue. Yeah, David's gonna swing in with Soldier of the Pantheon. That'll put Jesse down to 14 and makes Temple of Silence, and that's gonna try to press his advantage. Yep, no, nothing else on board. That is, there, there's definitely a hole in the curve of this deck in the, you know, two to three slot, only the Precinct Captain on two, and Banisher Priest, not exactly the ideal three drop, but then we get to five. <laughs> so Jesus Trapper obs that Ghost Council. Jesse had drawn that second blue source, so it'll get dissolved. Just in time, and is able to scry land to the top, very nice turn for Jesse. Yeah, he plays that fifth land, it's a planes. Right now we've seen Jesse every turn has had the option of Celestial playing the Soldier of the Pantheon and has not done it. He is still with five mana, opting not to make that play as he goes down to 10 off the Soldier. Soldier putting in some work. Uh, Jesse gonna try and, you know, catch it up into a Supreme Verdict along with another card rather than uh, Spending the Celestial Flare. Yeah, it looks like, so because he didn't play the Celestial Flare there, he was able to Sphinx his Revelation for two. That puts him back up to 12. And he draws a few cards. He does hit a Jace Architect of Thought, as well as a Detention Sphere off, off the Revelation <laughs> that turn. He's gonna, David assumed it was a Detention Sphere. It was actually a Divination, and now will be a Detention Sphere to take yep. care of the Desecration Demon. But divination just, into the lands so that he, you know, don't want to miss those land drops. That's a pretty, that's somewhat of a risky route there if he doesn't hit the land. Very true, but yeah. paid off. And I was going to say that gives David a chance to resolve a spell of choice, and the spell he chose is a pretty good one in this matchup as he resolves Obsidat, Ghost Council. 
a card that is going to be very hard for Jesse to deal with, especially at such a low life total. David doesn't even have to attack with it, just let it blink back in and out and drain Jesse two at a time. The only way Jesse has to deal with in his main deck, with that resolved Obsidat, is the one of Quicken in his deck. Yep, gotta find it and gotta find it fast. You can theoretically outrun it with, uh, you know, a Sphinx's Revelation into an Aetherling, but it's a little, it's a little soon. It's a little early in the game to be looking, uh, looking to that as your game plan. So earlier on, we've seen Jesse time and time and time again choose not to Celestial Flare the Soldier of the Pantheon. Um, that line is, is that line catching up to him right now? It's certainly making the Obsidat blinking ability a much more uh, formidable clock here. Now, so the idea of not blinking it is that he wanted to wait until David played a second threat and then Supreme Verdict both of them? Right. Some, something along those lines. You know, you don't want to spend a card on something that it, you see as worth less than a card. Yeah, so he minus twos the Jace. He gets three card, two lands and a dissolve off that that is split with the dissolve in one pile. So Jesse takes double land. Offset will come back. This will make the game six to 28. It's going to be interesting here is whether David attacks into an Azorius Charm or not, and he's going to get full information first. Yeah, he's in a Thought Seize, so he knows about the Celestial Flare, and now he sees that there is no Azorius Charm. He can take the Celestial Flare, and that should be a lethal attack here. It appears that way. The uh, uh, Mutavolt is going to have to jump under the bus here. Right. He's going to force a chump block. If you you could also just take the Sphinx's Revelation and attack with both. Let the Soldier of the Pantheon Let the Soldier killed. either, you know, get flared or the chump block happen. And then Jesse's really, <laughs> really in a hole. Yeah, I suppose taking away that Revelation takes a lot of the action out of Jesse's hand. It doesn't win the game this turn, but it increases your chances of winning the game next turn much more than any of the other takes would do. Yep. There's also this Jace in play, so it's also possible that you want to get rid of Flare and split your attackers. You're not representing lethal then, but you can take out the Jace and Well, you still are Jesse's representing lethal because the Obstat Blink would come back and deal the last right. two. So I think that that's also definitely a viable line. Take the Flare, split your attackers, put the Soldier on the Jace and the Obstat to Jesse. Make Jesse choose. That will give him a chance to Revelation for a quick in. But Jesse's dealing with a pretty low number of life points right now. Yeah. Were he to let that combat go, he would be at one facing an Obsidat. The soldier would still be in play. Yeah, so David opts to take the Detention Sphere here. He leaves Jesse both the Flare and the Revelation. All right. Detention Sphere... Well, it depends what he has in his hand. Detention Sphere is not very good against so the, the two finishers of David's deck, which are, well, actually, just, it's just Obsidat. He has a Blood Baron out of the board. Right. He does have Whip of Erebos in his hand, which I think is what he's protecting from the Detention Sphere. That makes sense. It's, it's pretty hard to lose if you have Whip Obsidat. Yeah, Whip is really strong against control. If you don't know about the whip Obsidat interaction, uh, that actually works so that if the Obsidat is in the graveyard and you whip it back into play, the Obsidat doesn't die at the end of the turn. He exiles out instead, so it almost it just brings him back to life. Yep. So, interesting choice there. I mean, perfect information and still choosing not to attack with the Obsidat. Yeah, choosing... So yeah, so just the Soldier of the Pantheon... Which does get Celestial Flared. Not flared. Yeah, so Jesse was able to pretty much kill a soldier which he otherwise would not have been allowed to kill. If he swings both of them, Jesse can't cast Celestial Flare there. Right. All right, Jace, minus two to see three lands. Uh, Jesse not excited about that one. <laughs> David splits the, uh, the untapped land, two untapped lands with the tap land. Jesse will take, he would take the two lands no matter what. I think he's pretty happy that they, he got two untapped ones. Yep, absolutely. And now he has to figure out a way, a way to come back from this uh, fairly sizable board deficiency. Well, once again, he's going to have to find Quicken. 
The danger about playing blue-white is that you have to just counter all the opposite ads. Yeah, which is hard to do with thought seizes and other cards pressuring you and a lot of your removal being sorcery speed. It's a lot of things to ask for. Which as you can see here, not, not entirely sure what the game plan is. Counting to see if he can stay alive. He can revelation for five, so he's at 11. Taking nine, so theoretically alive. Yeah, we take nine, but then the opposite app blinks out and he would be dead. Dead so the next turn, yeah. Yeah, he's gotta be pretty careful here. Revelation for three and chump with mutable. He can Revelation for three and hope to hit an Azorius charm. That's probably one of his best outs here. Yep. I imagine that's what we're gonna see. So Jesse drops to four on David's turn, thanks to Obsidat. So draw, we see a Banisher Priest turn from Joe Byrne. He does have a fair number of dead cards in the matchup. But he also has quite a few good ones, such as these multiple Obsidats. Yeah, Obsidat really is one of the best cards against control. Now the question is, how much is he going to swing? He's going to go ahead and swing with the team. So this is a lethal attack. Pretty much both of them. And with this is seven damage here. The Obsidat is going to come back and deal two more. So now Jesse is going to be playing off the top of his deck. The question is, how much to cast Revelation for? Looks like he is going to go for three. No, he's, he's going, going for the full for the amount. The whole amount. I believe that just leaves him dead here. Well, he's... Gonna go. He's gonna go to two, and then an obsidian. Two gonna with blink an obsidian. Yep. So he's gonna have to draw another Sphinx's Revelation. That last card down was an Azorius Charm. I don't think so. It doesn't look like he would have drawn it. And the whip comes down, which we have Banisher Priest. So just everything. David will commit his entire hand and blink out the obsidian. Yep, that's a uh, that's a tough spot for Jesse. Yeah, I'm a little surprised that he revved for that for so much there, that he didn't fish for the Azorius Charm. Granted, if he doesn't hit Azorius Charm, he's just dead. Yeah. You could have revved for two and leave up Azorius Charm and Mutavolt, but that's... <laughs> that's, that, at that point, that's hoping to get pretty lucky. Yeah. That might be a little too conservative. So Jesse does have the Supreme Verdict here, but remember, Whip of Erebos is going to do a lot of work. Especially with Jesse at two, with Averbos can make a lot of lethal attackers. Yes. Well, first things first, Jesse needs to cast a revelation this turn. He needs to gain life because he's at two. So what any line he has here has to start with Sphinx's revelation for one. Which then does not leave him enough mana to deal with the board and the offset at attacking. Yeah, I don't think he has, I think he needs a lot more lands to pull out of this one. Yep. And there's actually another Obsidat in David's graveyard, so he's going to yeah, have to deal with both of them. The one that got dissolved way earlier. Right, so that could be whipped into play for two more damage, so there's no way out for Jesse. He'll be down a game. And that's huge for David, to win that game one, where he has so many dead cards in his deck. Post-board, both, both players are going to clean up, um, you know, in their, their sideboarding. They're going to be able to reconstruct their decks as they see fit. But game one, I would definitely say David is at a significant disadvantage. Yeah, he was able to stick an obs that, which is really what he has to do against this blue-white control yep. deck, um, because it's so counterspell heavy. But once he was able to do so, it was a really tough game for Jesse to be able to win. Yep, Jesse had a couple of mana issues early, and then David just punishing him with obs that into thoughts he's obs that. Right. Pretty good sequence. Yeah, so really the, the idea is to clear the way for an Obsidat and then resolve it in the matchup. Yep. All right, so we're back. Why are we back in the booth, though, after game, after game one of our finals? Is it for cupcakes? I wish it was for cupcakes. Uh, That'd be great. I think it's for trivia, It's too though. early for cupcakes, though. That would have to be late. My, my body doesn't. It's never too yeah. early for cupcakes. <laughs> it's, like, it's always cupcake time. So uh, We yeah. are here for trivia, which is, you know, like the second best thing to cupcakes, I would say. Pretty cool. So yeah. this time stakes are once again increased. We are a giving a whole year. Yeah, we're giving an entire year. Yeah, that that is a lot. It's a lot of premium. It's a lot of articles. Premium. Okay, four star city premium. So we are going to go ahead and go to our our finals that match up here. This is between David Doburn and Jesse Hampton. 
Um, we're asking about a card in Do David Doburn's deck. Um, we are wondering what what legendary enchantment artifact, okay, that's a pretty big hint, is a one of in David Doburn's black white midrange deck. Hmm. So there's a lot of there's a lot of legendary enchantment, enchantment artifact. artifacts in Magic, so that's yep. gonna be that's gonna be a hard one. If to you believe you know the together. answer to it, answer it with the hashtag SCG Premium, and after the end of our finals, we will announce the winner of one year of Star City Games Premium. Yep, make sure that you tweet that at SCG Live with the hashtag SCG Premium. And is it Umazawa's GTA? That's legendary. That's an artifact. I don't know if it's an enchantment. <laughs> You're close. You got two of the three. All right. I hope we get to see lots of GTA action later today. There probably will be, and especially in Legacy. I bet we'll get a lot of GTA action. Yes. All right, so let's go into the finals. So you said sideboarding is very important in this matchup, especially I think, I don't want to say out of the mid-range deck, it's more important here. Yeah, absolutely. They have way more dead cards, really need to clean up. I mean, you get to take out your removal and put in Sin Collectors. How perfect is that? Yes, yeah, so as we saw, once David resolves uh, Obsidat in this matchup, the matchup becomes really hard for Jesse to deal with, and the way he does that, the four sin cutters go so are so good at doing that. Yeah, not only paving the way for the obsidat, also preventing uh, you know a timely supreme verdict or uh, late later sphinx's revelation, and contributing to the board. Uh, sin collector, one of the better cards ever printed against uh, against these style of decks. Yeah, outside of that, you might see an Elspeth Sons champion in from Doran just to get more. More big, threats. Yeah, big big threats. Would yeah, he, not be surprised to see that. Yeah, he has a lot of cards that are pretty dead in the matchup, so you know the, he could bring in an Elspeth, he could bring in Fiend Slayer Paladins, he could bring in a Blood Baron. Not, they wouldn't be because they're good, it would be because they're better than the other options. Yep, agreed. I mean, even Hero's Downfall, which is a card that is traditionally decent against the control decks, uh, is not even that good against Jesse's deck with no Elspeths or, you know, non aetherling creatures. Yeah, it's, yeah. Just, it's just Jace that it can kill. Yep, pretty much. And, uh, you know, if they're minusing a Jace and then your hero's downfalling it, that's uh, not not ideal, not where you want to be. All right, so on, on Jesse's side, he does a few options. Um, I think the thing I'm most excited about is to board in the second Aetherling here. I yes. was a little worried about Doburn's ability to thought seize the first Aetherling and make the game really difficult for Jesse. So he might want that second win con just as an insurance policy. It's a little weak in the matchup because the card's actually terrible outside of winning the game. You know, right. it's, it's the card that he wants in his deck and never wants to draw. <laughs> right. Otherwise, it just rots in his hand until you know turn 14, 15. Um, but I would agree with you, Thoughts is Insurance, and just making sure that you're able to get it in your top X cards, because you have to close the game as Jesse. If you let the game go long, then you're opening yourself up to losing to some sort of weird Thoughts is into Obsidat, or Thoughts is into Whip into Activation, you know, some late game sequence that uh, could really hurt you. Yeah, so we did see when Jesse played this matchup against Joshua Ravitz playing for Top 8, he did board in his Glare of Heresies. That was to deal with Potentially an Obsidat. Via um, Quicken. Yeah, via Quicken, it can deal with an Obsidat. It also answers the Elspeths that are in David's deck. It's probably just a... Precinct Captain, Soldier. Yeah, it, it answers enough cards that I think you want to board it in. Yeah. Uh, it's two mana, which is pretty good. It does have the downside that can be taken by a Sin Collector, but I, I'm pretty sure we'll see Jesse use those. Outside of that, some of his other cards, Negate, Last Breath, Dispel, Yoke Docks, I don't think any of those work. I don't... I think he uses Pithing Needle either. I agree. I think that it's uh, probably Glare and then maybe a couple Last Breaths. Last Breath just to take care of the Soldier and Precinct Captains? Yeah, just so that you don't have to you know, tap out for a Supreme Verdict and open yourself up to getting Obsid added. Yeah, the card I think that's particularly scary for him is Precinct Captain. Absolutely. We did see Soldier of the Pantheon give him some fits early on in Game 1. I think that's probably Soldier of the Pantheon at its best when your opponent's hand is Azorius Charms and Detention Spheres. Hey, yeah, certainly. And, uh, yeah, that, that Soldier did, did some serious work that game. I mean, getting underneath any counter magic and, you know, the, the other threats that David was deploying, Jesse had to answer on a one-for-one -one basis, so he wasn't able to, you know, Supreme Verdict and sweep up the Soldier in, um, 
into a wrath that, you know, was advantageous for him. Instead, he was forced to essence scatter one because he was too far behind, and then the other threats that were being played were obsidats, which obviously don't get supreme verdicted all that effectively. So, here we go, pulling up seven for game two of the finals here in Seattle. Jesse Hampton going to be on the play with his blue-white control deck. He keeps his seven. Yeah, so Durburn actually in both top eight and top four went to three games. He's hoping to get an easier 2-0 win here. Well, his deck is kind of like a rock-esque deck, you know? It has it's... no great matchups, but no terrible ones. Exactly, so those decks tend to win 2-1 a lot. <laughs> We see he has kept increasing captains. There's one in his opener. Yep, very effective card, uh, early pressure. And both players just leading off on basic lands. And it looks like the first play of the game will be a thought seize from Doberne, so he will see what he's playing against. It's gonna be two Azorius Charms, a Last Breath, a Revelation, a Verdict, and a Jace. So no more lands for Jesse. He's kept a pretty land light hand. Yeah which makes me inclined to take Jace instead of Sphinx's Revelation. Yeah, he may even take Azorius Charm here. Really try and get him? Yeah, and I don't think that's the worst idea. If David has a lot of early pressure, I think that's a pretty valid thing to do. What's of note is that Jesse doesn't have any answers to Obsidat right now in his hand. He doesn't have the Counterspell, um, which means that if Tobern can quickly get to an Obsidat, he may just run one out. Yeah. So he does end up taking the Jace uh, with no pressure on board and, uh, you know, not doesn't have the second white to um, play that precinct captain yet. Looks like he is going to look a little further on, going to take out that Jace while he still can. Jace certainly could do the most damage if it resolves. Yes. We see that that first Azorius Charm did find another planes for Jesse. He's going to cycle the second Azorius Charm and... A really He's good so idea. Smart. He's so good. He finds, <laughs> he finds Azorius Guildgate off it. Yep, absolutely rewarded for that tight play. And David having mana troubles now. Missing a third land drop, missing that double white. And Jesse is all smiles because in the meantime, not only has he found that fourth land, he has found another copy of Jace Architect of Thought. Wow. That's going to be huge here. David did have a Sin Collector in hand, but he's falling pretty far behind. Jesse starts out by minus twoing it. Shrink Divination Land Revelation. And he'll just take he'll take the two yeah, cards. Yeah, that I don't like that split actually. Jesse already has a revelation. What would you want to see by itself then? Is it the divination or the land? Probably the divination. Alright, so card number land number three does find its way for Jess for David. And actually he might be able to keep Jesse off of Revelations here. We see Sin Collector will be cast. Jesse has found a lot more lands, has the same otherwise has all cards that Doburn knows about. So it's Verdict, Last Breath, Sphinx's Revelation, which is now gone, and Divination. So he gets a Divination and another Jace Activation, really pulling far ahead in the card advantage category. Yeah, so Sin Collector, this is a four of out of David's board. Um, very good against these control decks. They can normally what he'll do is use these to take Jesse's counter magic to clear the way for an Obsidath. We do now know that two revelations are gone out of Jesse's deck. He only has two more. Well, one of them is on the bottom of it. One on the, the bottom, deck can't one exiled, it. right? Yeah. And uh, Jace does go up as Jesse drew a syncopate, which is pretty ideal draw at this point. Yeah, it's a little telling that he's drawn syncopate as he didn't cast a divination there. Right. He left up five mana. And he's going to go ahead and syncopate a read the bones. I can respect that. Yeah, uses the remaining of his mana to last breath the Sin Collector. It looks like Jesse really wants to get that third act of third minus two off this Jace. Greed is good. And we'll see that happen. So the Jace goes down to one, revealing Planes, Revelation, Supreme Verdict. This one, one's a little easier. This one's easier. The Revelation's <laughs> by itself, but this time Jesse's taking it. So that's Revelation number three. He's going to make a sixth land drop. Actually, he's going to cast Divination here. Yeah, why not? Draw some more cards. Well, one of the remaining cards in David's hand is a Thoughtseize, so it's actually true that David's going to probably get to, once again, deny a Sphinx's Revelation. <laughs> I think that Jesse is uh, more than okay in the card card advantage department here. Yeah. Without Revelation, he'll have to work a little bit harder to bury the game. Remember, Jesse's deck is so light. 
on win cons. It's just the one Aetherling. Yeah. That sometimes he does need that Sphinx's Revelation. We will see. It shouldn't be the worst. We'll see how he does without it. His hand is all lands, a verdict, and all lands in a verdict. The Revelation is certainly yes. taken. So definitely not uh, the greatest sculpted hand from Jesse, but yeah, how do he's you... up so many cards that it's still going to be uh, you know an uphill climb for David, I think. It is, but it's an uphill climb that he might be able to manage. Uh, right now, he casts, he's able to resolve, read the bones, and despite the fact that he's down, Jesse has no real control presence right now. Yep, yeah, that is true. He is going to get one more activation out of that Jace. Read the bones is going to split one and one. Well, he might get one. We may see a hero's downfall happen. The scariest thing is that Jesse has no answer to a, to Doburn just slamming an Obsidat next turn. Yep, that is true. Looks like a Jace for Jesse. Yeah, that was the draw for the turn. So Jesse with at least three more lands and a Supreme Verdict that we know about. But now we're reaching... Now David gets to play. Game. David gets to play <laughs> Magic now. He's going to lead off with Sin Collector. That'll take the Supreme Verdict, showing the two lands and the Jace in Jesse's hand. So with only one Sphinx's Revelation remaining in Jesse's deck, you know, what does he do for here? It's really. All right, so three cards, shows Glare of Heresy, land and dissolve. Jesse needs the dissolve in case an Obsidat shows up, so he's gonna take that off the first Jace. Now he has to navigate around the Sin Collector on the board with the second Jace. He can't just minus two it right away. Yeah, well, think, he might. He still may do it. Yeah, you might want to do it for value for Hero's Downfall. I think that David's choked enough that you can just plus it here, and if he spends his turn Hero's Downfalling, then you're fine with that. Yeah, he's going to go ahead and plus it, make another land drop, and pass back, but Jesse's not not closing out the game as well as he could be. No, he's, he's certainly not in a commanding position. Just up a bunch of cards, but not much to do with them yet. Yeah, and this is really where I like what the black-white strategy is against control. It has so much pinpoint removal, and the black, the, the control decks are so... Ooh, that's... They're so light on action. This is not uncommon. Yeah, that whip is a must-counter for Jesse. Whip of Erebos gets dissolved. Jesse does keep his card on top. That does not... Uh, that's not a good sign if you're David. Well, he's just got to hope it's not the fourth Sphinx's Revelation. Yeah. A minus two for Jace will show. Quicken. Supreme Verdict <laughs> and a land. Uh, the Supreme Verdict gonna be by itself. Looks like Jesse's gonna go ahead and take the Quicken. Yep. The card he left on top was an Essence Scatter that turn. All right. Or was it? And he found the one Aetherling. There you go. All right. Well, that, he, do, he does have two post board. But okay, he has two post board. So it's that he is, found an Aetherling, and that's what he was waiting to have happen. Yep, that is the exact card he wanted. That or the fourth Revelation. And so many business spells for David. He, he knows he knows what's happening here. That <laughs> oh, he, he had a really good window, but all it's these not... cards don't do anything anymore. <laughs> yeah, the game was that David needed to resolve something like an Obsidat before Aetherling hit the table. He was not able to do so, and now he's just he's on a two-turn clock. Yep. Lifebane Zombie is an interesting uh, card to see in uh, David's deck post board. Just an unblockable three-one that gives you a little information. Yeah, and I think that comes from the fact that there are a lot of creatures that aren't very good post board in David's deck. A lot of just cards, even. you know, he has Doom Blades and Ultimate Prices to get rid of. Banisher Priests. Heroes yeah. Downfalls, even. Yep. And Jace is going to go ahead and minus two off the battlefield. It'll turn into a Celestial Flare. Two lands are shipped to the bottom. But the big thing is going to be this attack for eight by Aetherling. Yep, it is the, the old two-turner from Aetherling. Another actually, Jace, that yeah, works too. So I think he's actually, Jesse's actually going to, I think, go with a three-turn clock in this Aetherling. Yep, be like. a little more conservative. He's got some counter magic, might as well. Yeah, there's nothing he's particularly worried about right now. You know, and Jesse is one of the greedier players. And that's not <laughs> to say that that's bad. That oftentimes is really good when you're playing a deck like blue, like a blue-white control deck. But kind of as you saw there, you know, instead of just going for the two-turn clock, he's going to not pump the Aetherling and just play a Jace to get more cards. Yep. No, he, he definitely has, uh, you know, some, some conservative blood in him. 
Yeah, he has a very dist I think a among a lot of the high-level players, Jesse has one of the more distinct styles of play. Yeah, he's a very stylistic player. Yeah, uh, I've oftentimes heard people say that he literally plays around everything, and that's not to say that all good players play around spells, but he kind of he sometimes takes it to the next level. Yes. All he's right. uh, a member of the Martin Jusa School of Magic. <laughs> just actually don't. Yeah, just be as greedy as possible. Draw more cards. Don't win. All right, so we see Lake Pain Zombie took Jace down to three. Jesse's draw for the turn was a divination. He's gonna, which means he snap draws more cards. <laughs> of course. What else are you gonna do? What else are you gonna do? That that is what the deck's supposed to do. <laughs> Even once you've resolved an Aetherling, there's no, you know, you can you, never too many taking cards. his time attacking with yep, it. Never too many cards. So but making, if I kill you, I can't cast more divinations. Well, what this lets him do is that David's at ten, so he can he can just spend two mana pumping Aetherling to a five. Or even right now, just four. If he doesn't want to spend the mana, he can make it lethal next turn. Yeah. Yep, just get your hit in. Blink it back out. Have some counter magic up. And he's going to go ahead and make it a five, six. So, so a five, five damage in. And Jace will be plussed. A flings in play. And then he'll pass back. He has a slew of counter spells now in hand. And that'll do it. Jesse wins game two. And this will send our finals on to a game three. It always has to be this way. Well, David hasn't won in two <laughs> games yet, so I don't see why he would start doing it now in the finals. <laughs> yeah. Well, that game uh, went basically according to plan for Jesse. David definitely stumbled, uh, missed that third land drop for two turns, which was vital as he had sin collectors that he wanted to deploy that came uh, a little too late. Jesse had already begun the snowball, and even though they did take out you know, a revelation. He, the, the Jaces were already in play at that point. So to me, that showed both the strength and the weakness of Jesse Hampton's blue-white build there. So to start with the strength. He was really like a light, like a good revelation next supposed to. He was able to close out the game, and his ability to deal with threats was really high in that game. His yes. control spells are really good. I think the weakness we saw is that he really is susceptible to counter to a counterplay from Thoughtseize and Sin Collector. Yeah, the pinpoint discard uh, can really really poke holes in Jesse's curve and his, in his game plan. There was one point at which David had three lands, and I think Jesse had seven or eight, and I was very worried that Jesse had actually just lost the yeah, game. Yeah, and it was still extremely close. <laughs> right. Um, granted, at those points, he's always one top-decked Aetherling or Sphinx's Revelation away from winning, but he still has to find one, and those yep. are, you know... It's like the, the cards that matter in the Lake situation are four Jace, four Revelation, two Aetherling. And that's really it. Yeah. He's just buying time until he finds those. So when those get thought seized early or sin collected early, sometimes he, he can stall out. Yeah, he can certainly peter out. You know, he does have some redraws with the Divinations and the Quicken, lots of control cards, but you know, you hit a patch of lands when you need to close a game out, you let you let these decks back in it, they they will take advantage of that opportunity. All right, so we see a little bit of re-sideboarding, it looks like, from the players. Yeah, we did see Last Breath. Uh, not sure on, you know, the number that Jesse brought in, but he definitely has at least one. Yeah, and it might be in this matchup, a card like Detention Sphere is doing is a three-mana sorcery that does the same thing that a two-mana instant could do. Right. Which is why we meet... You might see Jesse switch up what his control cards are. Yeah, at least like a hedge between them a little. You know, right. you still want D Sphere for, uh, say, a Desecration Demon, or if a Whip resolves, you're gonna want, you're gonna need that Detention Sphere. Yeah, but I think, if you're under pressure, Last Breath is definitely uh, a more efficient option. I think Whip is the only card you actually need it for. His other things like Supreme Verdict and Azorius Charms are probably enough to take care of Desecration Demon. Here. That's fair. So, yeah, he does have up to four Last Breath. I doubt he's played all four of them. Yeah, I don't think so either. Um, when you think about the cards that he doesn't want to touch in the matchup, he wants to keep every single piece of card advantage in. So that means the four Jace, the three Divination, the four Revelations are all certainly still in the deck. Absolutely. You, you need those two-for-ones against the one-for-one one deck. As well as the one Quicken. It's actually very good in this matchup as it gives him... Remember, the Quicken is the only way he can still that he can deal with an onboard Obsidad yeah. if it ever resolves. Yep. Having that uh, that sort of backdoor out to an Obsidad is nice, and uh, and it allows you to 
you know, hold up counter magic for the Dobzadat, and if David plays, say, a Desecration Demon instead of an Obzadat, then you can, you know, quicken out a Divination and then untap and Detention Spirit and still leave up your counter. So, quicken good against both both sides of Obzadat, which is certainly one of the key cards from David. All right, so we are going on to game three. David Dilburn will be on the play. And so David is the aggro deck in this matchup because yeah. he can't go late. Now, there's kind of two ways he can aggro here. The first one is he can actually play aggro creatures. The second one is that he can take apart Jesse's hand and resolve an Obzadat. Um, yep, the I second one seems like the more likely route to victory yes. through here. I would agree with that. I think poking poking holes in Jesse's hand with uh, the pinpoint discard and then landing something key, such as an Obzadat or even a whip, um, is going to be the the more uh, consistent way to win. I think that if you're going to try and curve out uh, against Jesse, then you're opening yourself up to losing to a Supreme Verdict off the top. So he's hoping for something like a Thought Season to triple Sin Collector hand. Yes. Thoughtseize into Sin Collector into Obsidat is is ideal. All right, so we are underway. Game three of our finals here. Both players start off on a tapped land. David's was a temple. He got a scry off it. And he's going to start with that game plan on a Thoughtseize. So we see all card draw from Jesse. This is Jesse's nut draw. His <laughs> Just only card draw. It's yep. three land, two lands, two divinations, two jaces, and a quicken. It's also a pretty Thoughtseize proof hand. <laughs> like, yeah, it's very hard to Thoughtseize against a divination hand. Against, yeah, two mystery cards, right? <laughs> like, Right. So we saw there David took a, a divination off the Thoughtseize, and, you know, Jesse got off pretty good. Like, yeah, he made a, he, he did not get hurt very much by that Thoughtseize. Yeah, not at all. And what looks like happened there is that he took the divination because he's planning to sin collect the next divination on this turn. All right, and try and, uh, Trying, you know, get him at the kneecaps there. Get him a. Uh... Yeah, he wanted to get both divinations before Jesse could cast them, and Jesse's draw another card draw spell with Sphinx's <laughs> Revelation. So now you're at a, a bit of a crossroads here. I mean, the Revelation is going to bury you late, but the divination is going to make it so that Jesse can get to that point. Yeah, and it's interesting to see whether or not David believes he can compete in the late game. The problem is that Jesse also has two Jaces, so I think right. he's kind of just there's no way for him to stop the card draw. He's just going to slow it down. He maybe hopes that Jesse bricks on his fourth land. Jesse's debating now whether or not he wants to cycle the quicken to be sure he hits that land. I think you can wait one one draw step here. And he sees the land. I like that he played. Uh, he didn't play the planes. He played the island yeah. that he tapped. Had it. <laughs> yeah. So he's just letting David know that he drew the fourth land. Yep. And Sin Collector with no follow up is David's play. Yeah, Sin Collector is a card that is quite good but needs a little help. Doesn't doesn't kill on its own. Just, David just, missing another land drop, uh, missing land drops in game two, now missing his fourth land drop with a Desecration Demon in hand, missing his second white with a Precinct Captain. So I want to talk about the playing around everything aspect of Jesse Hampton's play here. So if you watch here, he almost went for Jace Architect of Thought, which is what most people would do on this board, right? Right. So here's, I'm going to go through what I kind of, I've played with enough to kind of go through the thought process here. He could play Jace, but if he minus twos it, then he's going to lose the Jace. And he doesn't like losing Jace. He could plus one the Jace, but David has Hero's Downfall mana up. And so if he played the Jace and he got a Downfall, then he couldn't draw cards. So Jesse here is going to Pass. last breath <laughs> the, the, the Sin Collector just to make sure that he gets full value out of a Jace when he has a second Jace in hand, mind you. Yes. And I, I like, love it. And he, also, and he also takes two off the Sin Collector. He does not even, you know, he's going to last breath it on end step, too. It's like the greediest play. <laughs> Greed is good. All right, and David does hit the land. He hits Desecration Demon there. Uh, and now Jesse's going to have to play the Jace. He's going to have to lose the Jace. But, yep. gonna... but, you know, you're preventing six damage instead of two now. And he sees Essence Scatter, um, Celestial Flare, and a Plains. David correctly identifies that Jesse doesn't have an answer to the Demon in hand. But... Jesse is the player to take two cards yep. over one card pretty much every time. Two cards is more than one. Yeah. It doesn't take a scientist <laughs> to figure that he, one out. The opponent has a 6-6 six, six in play. Jesse has no answer to it. He's like, oh, but this one's two cards. Yeah, but I could be up another card. This is, and, all right, another thought sees will hit. So that now is Jace, Dissolve, Quicken, Essence Scatter, Revelation. Huh. 
So what now? You just take I like Revelation it. and attack Jace? I still can't believe that, that on that turn four, Jesse plays around a possible hero's death and fall. Yeah. Which he doesn't know about. Um, is it instead of just playing the Jace. Very conservative play. Very stylistic. Very much so. I've actually, in those spots, I've actually been playing Jason downing it and just letting it die to the Sin Collector. Right, that, I mean, I think the other two lines, like, for example, the line I would take there is play the Jason plus it. Right. So, like, you and I would take, there's three lines you can play, you and I both would take one, and, and Jesse, Jesse takes the, the third. third. <laughs> he takes the third one, right. Magic, magic is a complicated game, let me tell you. All right, he does take the revelation. Yeah, that tells that his game plan is to use Demon to take out the Jace then take out the revelation. He's actually going to try to keep Jesse off card draw. Yeah. Which is hard to do, yeah. but he's he's giving it his all. All right, so Jesse un now has to deal with that on board. He draws Supreme Verdict, and I think he can almost count on drawing a way to answer the, the demon. Yeah, I would agree. Now, Jesse's not playing the Verdict here because he doesn't want to lose to an Obsidat, so he's actually going to go ahead and take... He's going to use the Quicken to end step Quicken Verdict the demon. Ooh, and he's going to get another creature out of it too because yeah, he, David did draw his second white. He's going to hope that, yeah. So David does draw the second white for Precinct Captain. And he's going to, there we go. This is, I love Quicken. Okay, yeah, Quicken, Quicken into Supreme Verdict on end step. David's like, hey, you didn't <laughs> have little, that a minute a ago. Smirk. He knows exactly. <laughs> you didn't have that a minute ago. What happened? If I were Jesse, I would make a comment like, I didn't have it when I cast the Quicken. I would say something <laughs> like that. Just <laughs> Yeah, how sick would it have been if he just miracled the just, Supreme Verdict? If he just didn't even have it when he started. So. <laughs> Alright, Jesse with uh, Gaten to play tapped. No plays here. Yep, leaving up counter mana. Can't, can't succumb to an Obsidat. I'll tell you that you will not see Jesse take down counter... Like, he will take eight points of damage here before he takes down counter magic. Yes, absolutely. Well, he correctly identifies Obsidat as the card for the rest of this game. All right, so he's gonna make Jace here. He does have the Essence Scatter in hand. Yeah. He's gonna go ahead and plus the Jace. And it does get downfall. Yeah, that's a, a situation that unfortunate for Jesse. I don't think he can actually, he can't actually play around that because he's leaving up the mana to counter into possible obs that, which you know, David does have. Yes. I mean, it's also possible Jesse could have minus there. Just played it as a draw one. And, and draw like, two. yeah, Precinct Captain attacks the Jace, then you're not getting a soldier token. If it attacks you, then I'll you still have a Jace. I'll tell you that making a play of Jace minusing it into a 2 2 is a play that you will never see Jesse hand. I know, and I do it all that the is time. Far, <laughs> that, is, that is resigning yourself to only getting one or maybe two cards <laughs> off Jace. That is not enough cards. Yeah. Alright, so Swords of the Pantheon puts on more pressure. It's gonna force Jesse to verdict here, which he does have. And now the turn Still is Still living up scatter. Yeah. Now, Ooh, thought now this is why the black white midrange deck is so good against control He's though. One mana short, it looks like, of going Thought Seize into Obsidat. Yeah, so the question is whether or not he wants to Thought Seize now and then play Obsidat next turn. Or do it in the same turn. Yeah, he's gonna go ahead and I think it doesn't matter, he's gonna go ahead and split this up. Yeah. Well, his, his two-card hand is now uh, Obsidat and Elspeth, so you can threaten, you know, you can, you can add, it's sort of like three subsequent threats, the Thoughtseize into the Obsidat into the Elspeth, or yeah. vice versa. Jesse does have the Glare of Heresy in the hand. For the Elspeth. Yeah, now, now he's debating whether or not he wants to negate the Thoughtseize. He knows that that means land Obsidat will just kill him. But he doesn't really have a choice here, right? Because if he doesn't, then the thoughts he just takes the scatter and he plays the. And then land opposite that still kills him. Yeah. I think, I think he plays the negate as a result. Yep. yep. Which actually works out absolutely perfectly for him. Yeah. So the, right now, all the cards match up. The negate, the negate is for the thought sees, the essence scatters for the opposite and the glare of heresy is for the Elspeth. Yep. Matches up absolutely perfectly for Jesse here. And just plays land and passes back. Now remember. There are a lot of cards. David has, he's still drawing more thought seasons or sin collectors. <laughs> Here's a crossroads. He actually essence scatters the desecration demon, so now he's opening himself up to Obsidat. Well, he still has a dissolve. Right. So he has more counter magic. And we see another demon off the top for Doburn. Oof. And this one is not. Does, Jesse's gonna. He has a Azorius charm in his hand, and he's decided to write 
that for the Desecration Demon. Yeah. Anytime you Azorius Charm, uh, you know, expensive creature with summoning sickness. Yes, yeah, takes two turns for it to get back at you. Yep. We see Precinct Captain drawn for Doburn. He's actually going to jam the Obsidat straight into a Dissolve. Jesse, pretty happy about that. Yeah. Couldn't, couldn't have dissolved it quicker. Yes. If I'm Jesse, I'm scared, or at least worried, that that jam of an Obsidat means that Doburn has another Obsidat, which means it's time to get the wind condition going. Jesse goes out and casts Aetherling. Yep. And the race is on. Yeah, he currently has no answer for the Desecration Demon in hand, though. Yeah, he is uh, a turn behind of this race. Yeah, it's a three-turn clock with Aethling. The most it can deal in one turn is eight. It's a three-turn clock starting now, and David is a two-turn clock starting next turn. Yeah, so any kill spell will turn the race for Jesse. And... Oh, wait, no, no, he's not behind thanks to Muta Vault. He has a Muta Vault in play, which can oh, sacrifice wow. to the demon. So Jesse's actually ahead on board in this actually, race. Actually... Actually, the difference, the one turn difference of Mutavolt that the Esper deck does not have, but Blue White does. The spell removal spell would stop that. Well, he's going to go ahead and take the six first. He'll, you know, sacrifice Shrug the Mutavolt on, on the last possible turn. Yeah, definitely. No reason to be that. hasty. Goes on to three, and Precinct Captain is joins the table for Doburn. And because he chose to not tap this turn, say he had tapped this turn, right? He'd be at nine, then the demon would be a seven, seven, and demon plus precinct would be nine. So that means Jesse would have to spend an extra mana to leave back the Aether Lane. But he does not have to do that. The precinct captain is not lethal. Yep, so he's gonna glare of heresy away the precinct captain. And this looks like a lethal attack to me. He wants to be careful. He needs to make sure that he leaves enough mana up to uh, pop, to sacrifice the Mutavolt to the demon. He leaves one up, which is enough to sacrifice the Muta, activate the Mutavolt to sacrifice, but not sacrifice and blink the Aetherling. But that it doesn't matter because you're not playing around a spot removal spell anyway. Because if the spot removal spell hits the Mutavolt, then the Aetherling has to sacrifice the yeah. demon anyway. So yeah, this is this is a lethal attack. So he's not now. Going in for lethal attack is far more aggressive than Jesse Hampton would be in a situation. So what he did there is he pumped the Aetherling to five. Um, he hit with the Mutavolt. So that was a, a seven point swing. He actually left back four mana to deal oh, with. Oh, okay. Yeah. He, has, he has a spell. <laughs> All right. And that'll do it. So two games to one. Jesse Hampton is your Star City game standard open here in Seattle. Wow. With blue-white, a deck that, you know, was considered somewhat obsolete. Yeah, I actually want to talk about that last turn. You said he did have the chance for a lethal swing. I, I was really impressed with the way he played that, just to go with a two-turn clock instead. Yeah. He left up four mana so that he could Azorius Charm and play around double kill spell on his Aetherling instead of going for a kill there. Right. It, were that card a land, he wouldn't be able to play around a spot removal spell on the Mutavolt anyway, and you should just go for the lethal attack that turn because you stop one draw step. But with the Azorius Charm for the Demon, it's much more uh, of a you know safe situation to just wait the extra turn, save up the mana so that your Aetherling doesn't die, and, and then go for sure the kill enough. the next turn. <laughs> yeah, sure and enough, that, kill him next turn. All right, 